So this morning uh, is a Monday, which means Monday, um, well, it's a Monday, so that means we could all use a little dose of hope. And uh, I think this week is is looking like it, it may just be one that would will require perhaps an extra dose of hope. Tomorrow's a big day for our country, for our world, and I think I think we can all acknowledge that wherever you sit, politically, um, theologically, etc., there uh, there's there's just going to bring some there's some challenge ahead of us. Um, no matter what happens tomorrow, no matter um, what happens in the days following, um, it's a, I, for me. I think it's an opportunity to be reminded of the hope that we have in Jesus, to be reminded of who God is and who uh, he says that we are. So with that, we have uh, the text this morning that we're sitting with is Isaiah uh, chapter 25, starting in verse 6. And um, in in many ways, the, the, the prophet Isaiah was, um, we see as, as Christians, we, we see the prophet Isaiah as, as prophesying foretelling um, uh, the coming of Jesus, that, that um, so many of the promises, the, the sort of promises of, of what God will do and where God will bring his people, we believe uh, were in many ways fulfilled by, by Jesus and um, were really launched into a, a kind of catalyzing moment through his incarnation, his death, his resurrection. And so... Um, we trust that the promises we see in Isaiah are in, in some ways um, unfolding before us and in some ways will be um, made full and complete uh, when Jesus returns. The kind of the, 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 you, the, um, the phrase that's used often is the, the now and the not yet kingdom of God. That God's kingdom is now, it is here, as Jesus said, it's at hand. And, and there are moments where the kingdom is here on earth as it is in heaven, and yet that kingdom is not full and complete and uh, universal yet, but we trust it will be. So here we have in Isaiah 25 a vision of, of what it will look like when God comes and, and brings completion to the movement of his kingdom. 25, 6, it says, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. In verse 7, there's this reference, this uh, metaphor of, the, of using this shroud, this sheet, casting over all the people, spread over all the nations, and then it says that God will come and swallow up death forever. And... Perhaps now, more than ever in our lifetime, we can feel a global shroud, a global sheet of death that is covering and being spread over all the nations as we walk through the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. And here we have this promise that, that God will swallow that up, that God will take all of death and just defeat it. There will be no more um, and so I, th I think it's this invitation this morning for me to be reminded that, yes, we can all feel this shroud spread over the nations. We can feel the, the, the pain, the, the suffering in our world right now. And yet also, as we look at this vision of what the kingdom in its fulfillment, in its completion, in its totality will look like, we can also, in the midst of this shroud, the sheet of, of death, we can also pay attention for the moments when we see the kingdom being played out in front of us, like a almost like a movie trailer. We see these moments of of feasting that that can give us insight into what it will be like someday, right? 
again, the vision of, of what it looks like. It's a feast. It's a feast on the mountain of the Lord of hosts of rich food, of well-aged wines, rich food filled with marrow, wines strained clear, tears wiped away from our faces, the disgrace of the people taken away. And it's this acknowledgement of, yes, God has finally saved us. So we can acknowledge the shroud, but I think we also are invited to pay attention to the moments when we <clears throat> when we can see God's light and his kingdom breaking through that shroud, giving us a glimpse, giving us a reminder, giving us a little taste of uh, his promises um, that will one day come uh, filled with life and feasting. And so I invite us today to, to pay attention to those moments. There are challenging moments nonetheless, and that, you know, last night, for example, I remember you know, we, we had, as a family, we just went down to the beach and went for a little walk along the rocks and kids were pulling up sea glass and it was this beautiful moment of sun shining, you know, and then the fog came in. <laughs> it was cold and, you know, so we kind of, but there, you know, for a brief moment, there was this, this experience of, of joy and beauty and rest and, um, and I, I, I think it's important for us to hold on to those, to celebrate those, to acknowledge those for what they are, um, and, and to, to pay attention when they're coming, um, and to sit in the moment when they are there. Uh, the, just to kind of wrap up, the um, Celtic monks had a, uh, they had a phrase for moments like that. They called them uh, thin places. And when they would experience a, temp, a, a taste or a glimpse, a reminder of, of, of the, the sort of heavenly feast that, that God will bring to this earth as his kingdom is, is made full, when they would experience moments like that, they would say that they were experiencing a thin place. In other words, that the, the gap between heaven and earth was, was lessened. And they would feel this, this sense of, this is a thin place. This is a, this is a place where the gap between heaven and earth has become decreased. So, there is a shroud covering the world today. Make no mistake. We can acknowledge that all the while. We can also still celebrate the ways in which <laughs> God's kingdom breaks in. Uh, <laughs> like a little kiddo showing us uh, her schoolwork. So, be encouraged even in the midst of the shroud, pay attention to the moments of the kingdom and celebrate the ways in which um, God's kingdom is at hand and continuing to break into a world of brokenness. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.